Hi everybody, welcome to Old Guy's Garage. Good morning. Today we're going to start on rebuilding here this front end here with the new parts, reinstalling the A arms and the spring. We have some upper and lower control arm bolts here, brand new. We've got our memory tape here holding the shims for the upper A arm alignment. And we've got some freshly painted bolts for the fender well. And we got our nicely rebuilt, repainted A-arms here. Have my tools lined up that we're going to need. I went ahead and, uh, especially with all the loose bolts, went to the toolbox and grabbed all the wrenches and, and sockets and everything that I think I'm going to need here for the project. And here's the other side. Parts lined up ready to go so here we go anxiously awaiting to get this thing put back together Got my tools down here. I'm gonna apply some grease in here. Alright, I'm gonna do the front bolt first. Bolt's ready. Extensions are ready. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, easy trigger. Now let's see here. Might have to reposition myself. Yeah. Come in from underneath. Hammer here. There we go. All right, got the one. This one, other one's going to be a little tricky because I'm dealing with the header here. Getting that bolt through there was a bit of a challenge last time. are through. Coming back up. Let's set my hammer down. Get these nuts on. Oh, darn it. Keep on scratching these. Okay. Now let's go ahead and tighten them up.
go. That's snug, you know? It's not like super tight, it's just snug. Do the upper. Let's see here. Moving on, gonna grab different wrenches. So we're up here now, and what I'm going to do is just dry fit the upper A arm. I'm just gonna set it in place. A look at things. Okay, so we're gonna go about right there. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna drive through my bolts because um, I don't think I would get it in place if I, because of the, this dimension here, if I put my bolts in, I don't think I would. Um, get them through here I don't think there would be enough room being that that's a big block so at least we can punch the bolts through on the bottom Okay, that's pretty close. I'm gonna push him all the way in. It's like we might have to do a brake line mod over here. Okay. There we go, there's a little bit more light. Back down low here. thing I'm going to do is set these bolts. Basically going to use my punch drift and then tap these in with a hammer just to get them nice and secure. So far so good just punch those bolts now we're going to use this memory tape here that has our shims from how it was before so we're going to open this up side by side and we're going to have our bolts ready as we're dropping these in as well as the wrench to tighten things up okay so what I'm going to do whoops let's not do that Come on. oh geez Louise that's twice I'm going to get these nuts here started and when I get close I'm going to put the shims in place. Oh boy, this one's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to tighten these down. I'll tighten these down enough where I can get my shims in between. There we go. 
な。<笑>
um, I think I brought out a 15 16 or 7 8 I also had to adjust the brake lines a little bit so a 3 8 and 7 7 16 wrenches were needed so as well as a 15 16 yeah 15 16 inch socket so but yeah that's this side here and we'll go on over to the other side And here's the other side, looking good. There we go. Cleaned up new parts. Did get past that header there. Um, it's a little beat up, but uh, we got past it. I used a tuning fork, not a tuning fork, one of the, uh, the ball joint breaking tools. Wedged that in there and, and scooted the header over just enough to get that bolt through, so. Cool beans. And there's a look from above. You can see we got our our shims back in place. As we come to the other side here. Got this guy here dialed in. And the brake line's out of the way. So. Alright, tomorrow's going to be springs and spindles. Fun stuff. Okay. We are getting ready here to put the springs in. So, spindles are out. I did paint these guys too. So... I masked them off and painted them so it all looked pretty good. Got the steering arm there ready to go. So, got some grease. Got our tools lined up. And uh, we're going to give this a shot. I want to get some grease. Grease down and in here. <clears throat> I know where the bottom one's supposed to stop in it, so that's a good thing. It is cold this morning, so anyhow, all right, my fingers are cold. Um, okay, so we're ready to go here. I'm going to clean my hands, get my gloves back on, and we're going to get this spring up there. For this, this oval hole, the product manual, the assembly manual, says to put it in between the two holes, but there's only one hole there. So, yeah. Okay, so I do have a spring compressor, and I did to manage to fit it through that A-arm. So um, I was going to return this one because I thought it didn't fit. But um, so I'm get this guy here tightened up. And we're going to go for it here. We want this bolt to eventually end up in the center before we really start twerking on it. So. This guy here is going to have to go on a lower. And unfortunately, I am really scraping up my springs that I painted. One thing I'm not going to do is use a ratchet. I've seen some guys use ratchets on these, a ratcheting wrench, I mean, air ratchet. And man, they can get them, get them torqued down really quick. But man, I just don't know if you lose the, uh, you know, you lose the feel of where things are getting tensioned at. So I'm going to get him where I like it. You can kind of see what I'm doing there. I'm going to just tighten, finger tighten this guy up. And I, am, I did not use a spring compressor when I took these guys off. So um, I don't exactly have a plan or an idea of where the, the fork should go or how many coils I should compress. Okay, we've got this thing cut down. And I got the short hooks on one side and long hooks on the other, and that bar in the middle. Go ahead and, well, I think he just moved a little bit. Make sure he tries to stay as similar to the other hooks as possible as we do this. At least when I compress it this time, I won't have this bolt sticking way the heck up here. So, 
Got it compressed by a few inches. At least all this work is warming me up. Alrighty. We're going to go ahead and position this in. Okay. Here we go. My jack is ready. We're going to position this in. And I'm going to go off the bottom. I'm going to position this in. It's like a crown up here. We have to hit. Light to see this up here. I really want to get that spring compressor. I really want to get that spring up in there. Okay. That helps. Okay. So I'm going to use the jack now. Give it a little pressure. I'm going to take this line. Let's see where the hell I'm at. Where I'm, where I'm, where I want to be there. All right, I'm going to. My handy. Oh, it's not tight. Come on, baby. Just get me close. Okay. So now I'm going to check. Okay, I need to be turn it this way a little bit. Alright, I'm right there by the beginning. And I guess I'm okay up top here. Man. Start cranking this thing up. All right, it's looking better. Okay, so the spring's seated on the bottom there. Okay, all right, I'm gonna get that lower spindle on. Go ahead and put the top one in. Looks like I gotta raise it up a little bit more with the jack. And this top one, three quarter. Top one is three quarter. Okay. Okay, that definitely gave me enough access. Seven eighths, three quarters.
Well, I'm gonna go ahead here and load the spring. Unfortunately, I don't have any of my uh, my shocks. My shocks are coming on Tuesday. So today's Saturday. I should have ordered the shocks. I kept on waiting. I went ahead. What I'm working on here. I ended up just taking parts of the spring compressor apart uh, to get everything out. So that's what I'm working on here. Uh, there we go. It's completely out now. Yay! Alright. Okay. One last thing I'm going to do is put the cotter pins in. Let's see, we got seven eighths and three quarters. And I need to grab this way and then we got this bottom one I think I'm gonna have to come from the other side he's in here somewhere Wow, those are a lot firmer than uh, than the old ones. And last but not least, I'm going to touch this guy up a little bit. Looks good. Looks good. Nice. All right, off to the other side. All right, here we go. Um, one final note: we got to do these grease fitting things, thingamajigs that go on the bottom here of the ball joints. So the three eighths, and we'll get these guys here tightened up. All right, so it's just going through the parts here. Got a dust shield and steering arms and brackets, and we have the the rotors and the calipers. So um, looking forward to getting these parts on, man. Big deal, big deal. Pretty damn excited. So, and man, oh man, what a difference that is. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? All right, we're gonna get started here on the disc brakes. Okay. Let's get some of these bolts opened up. Got those. We're gonna get to these other parts later. Um, so we're really gonna get the dust shield on for now, this bracket on, and the steering arm. So that's what we're gonna work on now. All right, we're gonna get this dust shield on here first with the caliper bracket. It goes like that. This guy goes like that. 
And I do have a little heater running, so hopefully that's not too annoying. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to get the steering arm, the medium sized bolt here, and the long bolt here. Okie dokie. Get this bolt going. Use a longer bolt here. Put him on. Perfect. Okay. And then they're calling for these nuts. These nuts on the back side here. And let's see what these are. Three quarters. says low camera battery even though I have this thing plugged in so I am going to pause here and be right back okay we've got these three-quarter bolts through I've got my socket wrench here all right go ahead and start tightening these bad boys up Ratcheting wrench. There we go. Put that guy on there. Let's get this guy on. And we're just going to go to town. And we're going to have to cut this bolt, I know, because it's definitely going to hit. And we just about got it here. Turn it to the other side. We'll do the same thing with this guy. Okay. And let's give this guy a shot. Okay, he must have been bigger than that. 15 16 Big boy. Just watch where your hands are going if you don't have gloves on. Okay. And then what they have you do is bend these guys. So... See if we can't get that other one here. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we got this guy on. We're going to go to the next step. All right, it's brake rotor time. So first thing I am going to do is use some handy dandy brake clean. And grab a rag and clean the rotor off. <clears throat> oh man, this stuff just goes everywhere. Holy cows. Oh, 
man, look at that nice new rotor. It's nice working with new parts. Not getting mud and dirt and grease and all kinds of stuff on my hands. For a while there, it was dirty for a while, long time. All right. So we're gonna have to uh, seat the bearings in this bad boy. Okay. All right. Let me grab what we need next. Okay, so got our bearings, large and small. The large one goes in the back, the small one goes in the front. Castle nut, center cap, washer, and I believe we're going to need a cotter pin. They gave us a, quite a few, so I'm going to take a few out here. I'm going to rest those up here. Okay, front bearing, rear bearing. Lay all my parts out. I'm going to put the parts back to the other side of the box. Okay. So, let's see what we got here. We know this big one goes back here. Alright. Let's grab him back out. Ooh, fancy, fancy. That's pretty slick. That is really something. Okay, so we got to grease these. So we're going to take a time out and we're going to grease these. Okay, how I've seen people do it is put grease in their palm like this. And they just roll the bearing in it. Get it nice and greasy. Mm-hmm. Get a little more. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, make sure he is good. Get all that grease out of my hand. Alright, I'm going to put him in like that. And next is, I'm going to cap him off with that. Okay, so we got our bearing in there. I'm going to add a little bit more of the good stuff. Next, what I've done here from my ball joint press kit, I've got this cap. And this cap fits this really nicely to help me punch this and seal the rear here. So, I'm going to set that in place. Set this cap on it. Say when it's down all the way, it'll have a uh, different sound. That's pretty solid. Okay. We're going to go ahead, put them on there, and get the bearing in the front. Let's just see how this looks. Okay. So yeah, we definitely need that bearing in the front there. So I'm going to back this guy off and put the bearing in the front. Alright, I'm going to get this next bearing here all greased up, ready to go in. So that guy's ready. Going to clean my hands here and work I'm gonna put the rotor on. There we go. Do, 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 do. 
Okay. Okay, he's back there. Bearing. No plastic, you don't get to go in there. Okay. That looks good. I just want to make sure there's enough in there. Okay, got our washer and our castle nut. Let's check the size here. Definitely bigger than 15 sixteenths. Okay, I just grabbed a good old crescent wrench. You don't really have to get this guy super tight anyways. Man, look at all these new parts. I am like so friggin' excited. This is so boss. Oh man, that feels so good. So it's pretty tight now, so I'm going to back it off. Just they say like an eighth of a turn. And then put the cotter pin in. I mean, I mean it's it goes nice, man. Look at that. So, okay, grab me some pliers. Okay, and we get our cap here put on. I'm going to go around this with my screwdriver here. All right, that's in. Man, I am just so stoked. Fantastic. This is awesome. This is awesome. Okay, time for the calipers. All right, I just pulled this out of the box. We've got our disc brakes in there, the pads, and where the hose is going to go, and our bolts. So we're going to disassemble this guy and get him on there. And he's even conveniently labeled far as left. How about that? Okay, there we go. All right, it says we got to install this guy. Put him on the caliper here. Okay, we got two copper washers. Okay, so it pretty much says one copper washer on the bottom and one copper washer on the top. There we go. Okay, we're not going to tighten it until we get the whole caliper back on. All right, so I dry fitted the, uh, the caliper here just to kind of get a feel for it. It's a relatively tight fit between those two guys, but hey, that's a good thing. So right, I'm going to go ahead, put my first pad on here. Okay. This guy, let's see if we can get 
get these both on at the same time. Looking good so far. Just got to fit in between this bracket. All right, so that's in now. So I'm going to leave him there. We got these two bolts. Drive through the back side. We'll do this top one. started so is the top one all right so not gonna believe what I just found look at that beauty oh yeah all right oh man world of difference all right we go to the top one here Got that, man, look at that. Oh boy, I am excited. Big deal, big friggin' deal. All right, we're gonna do this guy next. So what I'm gonna do here is do this guy. Gonna move him over. Yeah, so he's gonna fit up in here. Just like that. Okay, so I just got back from AutoZone got these guys so thankfully they had them for some reason I couldn't find them in my kit I don't know if they're in the back of my trunk or not but I got a ton of parts in the trunk like a radiator and a whole bunch of other stuff and I just don't feel like rooting through it so we're gonna get this hose here taken care of let's see which way this slips on okay whoops runaway clip all right there we go Well, that guy's in there. Good deal. All right, cool beans, man. That feels solid. Rock and roll. That looks great. All right, got to tighten this back bolt up. And uh, going to do the other side. So, probably 9 sixteenths. So 9 sixteenths bolt to tighten that up. And we're good to go to the other side. Fun stuff, man. All right, so there we have it. This guy's set to go. Going to um, do the other side now. So, um, and then once we get the discs on the other side, um, I'm gonna go to the steering linkage is the next. Redoing the steering linkage. I got all new steering linkage to go on this baby. Got the disc brakes on the front here. Let's check out that other side. Oh man, look at that. Whoo! Whoops. <laughs> that is looking good. Man, that's looking good. Alrighty. Last thing I'm going to do here is come up here and get these guys finally connected. So, alrighty, I'm going to get these connected. Okay, just working it on getting this guy tightened up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is get that front one in. A little bit of a tight squeeze here. Okay, he's in good enough. I'm going to start on that front one. This is one thing that I was always questioning. You can kind of see from this kit, it doesn't really look like that front line is in line with the other one. So we'll see how this goes. What I did on this guy, I loosened these top bolts up. Whoop. And then I took this one out completely to help me get this one seated. And then um, I'm just going to go through and tighten both of these up. Um, really makes me wonder if I need the bracket. You can kind of see where the bracket is at in relation to the, where these brake lines here were bent. So I'm going to tighten these guys down and, and we'll see if I still need that bracket. I've seen some pictures where guys even didn't even use this.
I did here, I did run both. Whoops, let me see if I can get a better picture. Yeah, I did run both, both, there they are. Both bolts through at the same time, here and here. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten these up. Alrighty, got those bolts tightened up. And actually, it came out pretty good. Um, I was kind of surprised. It's until I put these top top lines in, it just things just didn't look in alignment. So, got some got a great view coming up for you here. Oh, let me get down. There we go. Man, doesn't that look good? Holy cow! Wow. Well, we're going to do the steering linkage next. Stay tuned. Everybody, as you noticed here, I got all the, the steering components here laid out. And I got the old center link and tie rods and all that good stuff. Idler arm here um, that I disassembled partially from the car we're going to use uh, to match up um, these parts here to make sure they're right about the same length here as the old ones. And then of course I got the tools ready. What I did, I just sampled the different size nuts and bolts that we were going to be using and then just prepared the proper tooling. Right now three quarter and half inch is going to be pretty widely used. Um, I know the castle, most majority of these castle nuts are three quarters so um, of course we're going to need a socket wrench for sure with an extension maybe a three inch maybe a six inch extension for the uh, idler arm over there we've got our bolts pulled from our bag from our storage and then I have the uh, all the castle nuts still in the grease fittings still in the uh, the parts here so I could just look at them and know exactly you know what part they all go to so as far as the center link goes this is the Moog center link and uh, where is the part number? But uh, the center to center holes match up identical to the um, to the stock holes, center to center. So I was very pleased. I had a few on order, not Moog, but I had a couple center links. And then um, I canceled those orders because I wanted to be sure that um, from center to center here was the same on these guys. And they are. So and this is the Moog DS749 center link. So. All right, well, here we go. We're going to start. Um, first thing I'm going to do is clean these up a little bit so I can see the threads. And then we're going to start assembling these tie rod ends. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this guy aside. Um, get him out of the way so I can put all of our new parts here together. Okay. Threading this guy on. Come on. See, that's the bottom one there. cardboard over when I'm done here. Yeah, still get the turn it on its side here to see where I'm at center to center. I'm at 18. 17, 7 eighths, need to be roughly 18 and a quarter. Twist that one, untwist that one. 18 and an eighth. 
Not 18 and a quarter seems to be where it needs to be. Okay, next step I'm going to do, since I'm getting close, I'm going to start snugging those up. That way they don't move around so freely. And then I can tweak my tie rods. That's one of the reasons that I do a tool check before I start. Go around checking all the bolts I'm going to need to tighten. That way all my tools are right here. I don't have to run back and forth in my toolbox. So that's a nice quick tip for you. And I love these ratcheting wrenches. Okay, man, look at the new part compared to the old one. Man, I like the new. Scoop this over. Put the idler arm back over there. And we're going to do the next one. Alrighty, getting this guy wound in. Getting closer. Okay, so that guy goes this way. That guy goes this way. Alright, let's see where we're at here. This one's at 18. The other one was just like an 18 and 3 16. Let me look at that again. Gotta get right on top of it. No, this is about 18 and 3 16. Okay. Well, there we go. That guy's ready. We'll set him by that side. Set him up here. I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to get some shots at that. So I have our old assembly here laid out. And what I'm going to do next is connect the center link here to the idler arm. And then my next move is going to be connecting the center link here to the pitman arm. And then I'm going to attach the tie rods. Just pulled out what parts were in the center link box. Castle nuts are already on there. Looks like we have these rubber grommet looking things. And if I look on my old one, it does look like there was a little something in between these guys here. So that's where we're going to put them. And we're going to go ahead and attach the center link here to the idler arm. Okay, getting ready here to set the center link. I'm putting the grease fittings back in the bag here. I'm going to put those on as the parts are wrapping up the installation. So, got the cotter pins handy. I am taking off, taking off here the center link castle nuts. Okay, so got the castle nuts. Got these spacers handy. So I'm going to put the spacer on. And the castle nut onto the side I'm not currently doing and just barely put that on there. And then this side, put that washer on there. And then we're going to go ahead and attach it up here to the idler arm. Cool beans, here we go. Okay, well yes, the new castle nuts are a little smaller than the old ones. They're 11 sixteenths. Alrighty, so we've got a rubber washer on there. That guy's pretty much going to go up there. We're going to put the castle nut on and torque this guy down. Oh, shame on me. I just realized I can't get past the uh, pitman arm. Okay. So here we go. These are 11 16 castle nuts. I'm going to set this guy up here where he's going to go. And I'm actually going to put him through the pitman arm as well. Let's do the pitman arm first. Okay, 
so he's there. Okay, everybody, before I'm going to tighten this, before I tighten this pitman arm up, whoops, I'll adjust, adjust my lighting here. I like to see too. Huh. Um, before I tighten this uh, idler arm up, after getting this center link in, what we're going to do is get this guy in and just finger tighten him. Just like that. Okay, then I'm going to grab my hammer here, and we're going to see how well, how close we are to getting this guy right. Wow, look at that. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Castle nut on top. Cool beans. 11 sixteenths. I'm just going to snug this guy. I don't want any of this stuff falling apart. Let's snug this guy. I'm going to snug this guy as well. Alright. Wow, look at that. That is looking fantastic. the car here getting ready to put the idler arm in and as you see whoops it's gonna go right here like that you see the holes and then you have to go through the frame here there's two holes to go through the frame and that's where the 9 16 socket wrench comes in handy to reach through the frame. Alrighty, so now <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take care of this guy here. The good old tightening down the idler arm. And what I did before, stuck this bolt through the other side. Way. Oh, right on in. Jeez, that was easy. All right. Okay. And then what I did for this washer, put them on my magnet like this and threaded them to the hole and put them on the bolt. This is where it comes in handy to have a little light that you can shine on in there. Using, using my headlamp it's gonna shine the light shine the light where that bolt is sneak them through place them on that bolt and then twist the magnet off and then we got our nut we're gonna use the shallow shallow socket for that shallow socket put the nut in there I'm gonna have my finger on the bolt on the other side and I'm just going to use the extension to thread the bolt on so I can't thread them anymore All right there all right take the longer extension and then I'm going to take my 9 16 ratcheting wrench and we're gonna tighten these bolts down this should be it. <laughs> All right. Make sure the socket's right. And there we go. Tighten him up. Pull this socket off slowly. 
I'm going through the top hole, line him up on the next bolt, do the same thing. And I lost the socket again. Oh, alrighty, that's it for this step. We're gonna put the uh, whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and put the piece on over there. This is the next step. Man, this looks fantastic. Look at that. Alrighty, here's the next one. Again, I'm going to get into the boxes here. Get the parts out. Still got to tighten, fully tighten these down and put the cotter pins in there. And keeping all the cotter pins separate. Cotter pin over there. Grease fitting. Come on now. Alright. Caveman it, open it all up. Cotter pin over there with the rest of them. Oh. It's like a 3 16 wrench, what you need for these. A quarter inch wrench didn't quite fit. This one here. They got this stuff figured out, that's for dang sure. Alright. Alrighty, grease fittings are in. We're gonna need our 11 16 wrench here. And uh, well, let's see if I can't get these guys in, if there's any more surprises. Oh, oh, so close, he's so close. I think if I tap him with this. There we go, I think I can get him in this way. Appears to be on some kind of an angle. If I can get that angle right, I'm gonna hit the friggin' frame. If I can get past that frame, I'm good. All right, we are in. Let's get a castle nut on here while we're here. <laughs> put that grease fitting on again here shortly. I'll leave them right. I'll put them over here with the rest of the counter pins. Alrighty, and then that guy's gonna go right in there. I can still move him over. There we go. There we go. Put a cotter pin on him too. I'm surprised there's no washers in between this stuff. Alrighty. Well, there we go. Man, oh man. One step closer to getting this thing back on the ground. It's a lot more, much more fun taking it or putting it back together than. Uh, Taking it apart, holy cow. It's nice to work with clean parts. You know, it really is. All right. Cool beans. Well, we still have to put the cotter, cotter pins and all these and tighten them down to spec and everything. Man, we are, we're doing good. We are doing good. All right, so we're torquing these bad boys down and uh, Tightening up the counter pins. I think this guy's set. Yeah. I'm going to turn that pin around so the 
that sides on top. Not that one, not this one. I'm gonna get this one. This cotter pin here. Yeah. Okay, one more to go. That's over there. go. Alrighty. So here we go. This step here just got done putting the tie rods and center links on. So now we're going to go with this sway bar. I got the greasable front brackets here and new links. So um, that comes with the washers and got the old bolts. Save the old bolts. I had those marked. So, all right, well, let's get to it. We're going to put these brackets up first in the center. We're going to leave these loose, but at least screwed into the frame. And then we're going to get these guys on and tighten these and then come back and tighten those. Let's get to it. Before we get started, just want to let you know, it's like everything for here that we're going to need is 9 16 So I got my, got my wrench, my socket, and my small, shorter socket with the extension on it. So... And you can also throw in this guy. All right, let's get to it. Got my bolts. I'm going to put these links aside for now. All right. So, I'm going to thread all my bolts with these washers that came with the brackets here. I tune up two up per side. I'm using the stock bolts. Kept those, had them marked. Um, looks like they're going to go right back in here. So, two there. Two there. Okay. I'm going to put these over here. I'm going to put these over here, that one over there. And it looks like. Okay, so this guy can go on here. We'll put this plastic, these plastic rubber things on. Okay. And then I am going to make sure I have my wrenches and everything ready to go. I'm going to crawl underneath this heavy beast. It's like you're doing, like you're doing some weight lifting here, man. Got this guy. Put him on. All right. Let me just see where he's gonna go. I think he's gonna go about right there. Let's see here. That's what it looks like. Whoop. I'm gonna turn him. Do this number. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna go about like that. So I'm just gonna rest him partially on the tie rod there run my bolts through. Get my bolts started. There's one. Okay, let me try a socket. This is not getting wider. Ouch. That's nice. Let's 
try this again. All right. There we go. A little coercion. I just don't want them falling on my face. That would be bad. That would be really bad. All right, let's go over to this other side here. than I thought to this idler arm here. Wowzers. Just don't let go of this thing. This thing is heavy. And cold. more bolts in this guy here. loose. I'm going to tighten this, these up just a tad more. And let's uh, put the links in. Alright. Okay, first things first. Washer. Bushing. Bushing. Washer. Darn it, I put that on upside down. There we go. And the spacer. And the washer. Then a bushing. And now this is when you want this guy to go through there. And you want another rubber bushing. washer and then get that nut on there boy oh boy that is close holy moly you know that was so close to that I might have to jack up the a arm here to fit all this in yep all right okay so I put the jack under the a arm here to give us a little bit more room Jacked up the A arm just a little bit. Get this guy threaded. Okay, and I'm going to torque him down a little bit more. I don't want him coming loose. So we got 9 sixteenths. 9 sixteenths on the bottom. 9 sixteenths 9 on the top. Okay, I'm, I'm going to finish torquing him later. There we go, he's on there good. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. Make sure you don't bang any nearby cars. This side, oops, this side I got a little bit more room. So I'm gonna avoid this bottom ball joint. I'm just gonna put it on this lower A-arm rail here. Keep away from that ball joint. Okay. Yep, that gives us enough room. And I'm glad everything stayed. Okay. And the trick is to just get that 
get that nut started. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put this guy here on the bottom. Tighten this guy down. And then we're gonna come back to those brackets that are in the frame and get those guys tightened. We're gonna tighten these till these are nice and compressed. I'm also going to look under here and make sure that that bar is centered. <sighs> okay, so for some reason my flash is on, but what I did, I got my space I wanted between the anti-sway bar here, roll bar, and the idler arm. I ended up loosening these bolts. Then I stuck this guy in here and wedged him all the way forward and then tightened these bolts down. All right, well, there we have it. Just have to do the shocks. Got a lot done today. Everything's looking really nice. Brand Frank and new. Oh man, this looks great. They ain't alive. Oh yeah. Alright, we'll get those shocks and then that'll about wrap it up for this video. Okay, well the shocks came in and I was just comparing them to the old ones here. They look pretty similar. They looks like the old ones are just a little shorter. So, they're the Gabriel Ultras. And it comes with the hardware and everything. So, and then I did keep the original mounting bolts. So, I'm going to use these again. I paint, did paint them up, so I think this will be a nice a nice touch on the bottom, save me from getting extra parts. And last but not least, um, I went ahead and checked the bolts, brought this over to the toolbox and got half inch socket and wrench and 9 16 socket and wrench. So all right, well let's get these let's get these guys on. Alrighty, I'm going to get this guy started here. What I'm going to do first, I have the shock here ready to go up. I'm going to run him up. And then there's a hole up top here and you can reach him above the control arm here. So my next step, I'm going to take this bushing, feel for that bolt, run that through. And then I'll put that washer on top. And then I'm going to take this nut here and thread him through. And then I'm going to go on top and torque this guy. So what I'm doing here, I got the vice grips on top and the wrench below. And I'm just using this guy here just to torque him, drawing up the, uh, the shock closer to the lower A arm. And let's take a look down low, see if it's getting closer to the A arm. Yep, it's definitely drawn it in somewhat. So we're probably going to get our bolts going soon and it'll draw it in the rest of the way. All right, so we're going to take these clips, slide them up here with the nut side on top. And we're going to scoot the shock over because we've got it tied in up top. We're going to draw this baby down. Start torquing this guy. Here we go. Got him going. Now I'm going to get the other one going here. 
Feels good. Now I'm just gonna torque these on up. I'm gonna down. I'm gonna take this extension off. Still go in a little bit more. Almost there. Yeah, he's up against there pretty good. Good deal. All right, I'm gonna go back up on top and make sure that he's tightened up all the way. So there we have it. I'm just doing some final tightening here with this guy. So I think everything looks good. Just gonna do the other side here next and that should wrap things up here as far as the uh, front end rebuild. So all right, I'm gonna go do the other side. Man, oh man, we accomplished a lot, didn't we? This is looking fantastic. Just finished putting the shocks in. I'm gonna scroll over here real quick. Oh yeah. That looks great. Alrighty, well there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. Hope this video helped you in a project you may be working on, inspired you to take the extra step, whatever it might be. So um, once again, thanks for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And just remember, whether it's a muscle car, a race car, a classic car, your dream, let's keep them running. We'll see you next time. Oh man, this looks great.